Amid confusion over its presidential election primaries, the All Progressive Congress, APC, is ensnared in a crisis. Now, this time, the problem uh, comes from barely two months old National Working Committee of the party led by Senator Abdullahi Adamu. A member of the National Working Committee, National Vice Chairman Northwest Malam Salihu Lukman, accused Adamu of not implementing the National Working Committee's decisions. He said the party's chairman is using President Muhammad Buhari as a cover-up for the former's inability to make a headway regarding the screening of presidential aspirants. Now, Lukeman said, despite the multitude of challenges affect, affecting the party, um, Adamu has remained largely inaccessible. The APC had shifted its primary originally, stated for May 30 to June 6th and 7th, following the decision of the Independent National Electoral Commission to extend the deadline for the conduct of the primaries by political parties to June 9. Well, joining us to discuss this and more is Dr. Dakuku Adol Peterside. He is a former Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA. It's always a pleasure to have you join us in the studio. Thank you very much. Great. Um, several reported allegations about what's happening within the, PD, uh, the APC, I beg your pardon. So my first question is, is the APC in crisis? The APC is not in crisis. There are no indicators to that effect. Um, I just listened to you talk about the opinion of Luke Mann, um, one of the six national vice chairmen of the party. He's entitled to his opinion. And he complained about leadership style of the chairman. Now, mind you, you have more than 40 members in the National Executive Committee of the party. And one person is complaining of, about the leadership style. You know, uh, the way we are, you know, you have people of different genetic makeup, different experiences, different perspective, different level of education and enlightenment. We are likely not going to see things from the same perspective. Um, but the good thing about the APC is that the APC has a father figure in the president. The APC has a leader. And so if there is a thorny issue, if there is an issue, that requires consideration from um, outside the National Working Committee. You have a president that can intervene, step in, and correct things. So APC is not in crisis. Is I'm it the same president sure. that we're talking about? Because Mr. President has tried as much as possible in the past years to stay aloof when it comes to party politics, especially the APC, being that we've seen several issues crop up, whether it be with the former lead leadership of the party and now. So really, does the president get involved in these issues because he seems to be more aloof when it comes to internal party politics? Typically, the president should not delve into internal poly poly uh, party politics. But from time to time, as leader of the party, as a man who is elected on the platform of the party, he's expected to intervene, if only for corrective purposes hmm. and stability of the party. Interesting. Now, let's take a look at... Um, um, the number of presidential hopefuls within the party. It's a record number this time around, and we see very interesting people, you know, in the run-up. Um, but then, when you look at the political weight and structure, the prowess of the people who have, you know, put their hats in the ring and say they want to, um, you know, run, what should be the deciding uh, factor for choosing, you know, a flag bearer? in the PDP, for you who's been... In the PDP or the APC? In the APC, I beg your pardon. Um, for you who's been a member of the party for this long, um, I mean, if it comes to that, if it comes down to delegate systems, because we're not certain what the APC is going to go by, whether you're going to do a consensus or you're going to have to use the delegate system. But if it comes down to the delegate system, what should be... Because I just asked the same question to my former guest. What should be the consideration of these delegates being that? They're the ones who decide who we, the voters, get to vote for at the end of the day. All right, thank you very much. If it comes down to delegate selection, or what you call indirect primaries, and I know it will definitely be indirect primaries for the APC, um, I think that there'll be five topmost considerations. The first one is capacity or competence to govern the country. That's one. The second one is that you need to win an election before governing the country. Mm -hmm. So APC will look out for a candidate that appeals to the Nigerian people, that has mass appeal. That's second. 
Third, the party will look out for a candidate, and it relates to the number one, the, the, the candidate that can implement the manifesto of the party. Now, a party runs on a thread that will have a clear vision, a clear vision of what we want to do in the country, how we want to change the country. And a presidential candidate that will ultimately be elected as president of the country should be the chief driver of the implementation of the manifesto of the party. So the party will watch out for that. Then the fourth thing a party will watch out for is somebody who is able to unify the diverse interests in the party. There are usually multiple interests in the party. Whereas um, there may be some ideological bonding. You know, even in, in other advanced democracies, if you have Democrats, you have those who are far to the left and those at the center. If you have Republicans, you have those far right and those at the center. Mm -hmm. So you must, you must watch out for that candidate that's able to unify divergent interests in such a way that it doesn't affect the implementation of the party manifesto and ultimately deliverance, the, the delivery of services to the Nigerian people. Hmm. Then the party will also watch out for whose personal qualities will help the party win the elections. Charisma, integrity, experience, background, totality of all of that will stand a candidate out or an aspirant out so that the party can elect him a candidate. Hmm. I'll start with the last thing that you said. Integrity, trust. Um, charisma, charisma. Experience. Yes. Um, these are some of the qualities that were sold to us as Nigerians when President Buhari first came. And a lot of Nigerians cast their votes based on these qualities that you have listed. And you also talked about other things, about you know, being able to govern, um, bring change to Nigerians. Can you really say that Nigerians or the president, the Buhari administration, has lived up to those things that you have you've numbered out this evening? Because these were almost similar to the things that we heard when the president was vying for this position. So I would really want to hear what these candidates will say, because if they're saying they want a better Nigeria, will that be saying that the president didn't give us the better Nigeria that we were hoping for? And does this not make his presidency look bad? In absence of a survey, we cannot say that this is the unified position of Nigerians. Well, I The, the position of Nigerians about the Buhari presidency is as divergent as we have diverse ethnic groups or diverse people in the country. You can, get, you can in, engage a man, he will tell you that nobody in the history of this country has done well like President Buhari in the area of infrastructure. Hmm. You can engage another person, he will tell you that if not for the coming of President Buhari, our security situation would have deteriorated to such a way that would have, to such a point that would have been a failed state by now. That Buhari simply arrested the crumbling of our security architecture. Has he? Really? I'm telling you that I'm, I'm curious to know how the president has. We're not taking a census to no, arrive no, 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 but, but at we what all you see, can call We see the level of insecurity of that we're facing in the country right now, as opposed to what it was. How has President Buhari arrested issues? I mean, let's talk about the latest of it all, the train tragedy. I remember uh, when that tragedy happened. Um, I, up till now, I mean, we've had insecurities over and over, but this one hits really close to home. How has insecurity really been arrested by this government? Because I would really like for you to explain to every other person who's watching and why we should say that the president has arrested the situation. I thought this night we were talking about politics, but I, I'll yeah, take yeah, yeah. Let's I'll take it's you part through, of the politics. I'll quickly take you through this that is, memory. This is part lane. of the politics. Uh, per, per you have forgotten. Now, recall that um, under the Gulag Jonathan presidency, girls in Chibok were kidnapped to date. They will not be released. Students have been kidnapped under Buhari's administration. Yes. But we've not had a case worse than the Chibok case to date. Hmm. Really? Because yeah, Chibok is the longest. Really? I'm not saying things are good. Don't get me wrong. I'm only saying it could have been worse. But Nigerians, were not, Nigerians didn't vote, Mr. President, because we're talking elections here. We're talking campaigns. We're talking about the rhetorics. 
Nigerians didn't vote for, it could have been worse. Nigerians voted for a better security situation and the president promised us to put an end to terrorism. And here we are seven years down the line, that's not necessarily, so it brings me back to my question. What, you've given us the determining factors. A lot of people can come out and give us rhetorics and say the nicest things. We could even have traced the antecedents down to when they won elections, how good they were when they governed. But when it comes to 2022, or let's say 2023, Nigeria has changed. Is that person going to be capable of running this Nigeria? Okay, now if you ask me, there are two things that Nigerians will prioritize in electing a president. And, and I can say that with some sense of responsibility. Two are key. One, the issue of security. The second is job creation. If there's a time that we are facing the challenge of insecurity, it is now. And I believe it can be fixed. When the fireworks of campaign starts, we would like to hear from the different presidential candidates how they intend to fix security in our country. Mm -hmm. Nigerians would love to know, would love to hear. It's not about rhetoric. Mm. If you say, in six months, I will ensure that there's no insecurity, the next question is, how? Please, can you give us details of your plan to deal with insecurity. Enough of rhetorics. Now, the other thing is job creation. If there's a challenge we face today, is the fact that job unemployment fits insecurity. And they are correlated. Now, unemployment is a catalyst for the insecurity we're facing today. Nigerians would like to know how you intend to fix the economy and by extension, create jobs for our people. So I don't think there's any dispute about that at all. OK, let me bring you back to the APC primaries. There have been so many speculations about former President Goodluck Jonathan picking a ticket, being a member of the party, not being a member of the party, a group of people buying him the form, you know. And then over the weekend, we saw reports on the pages of national dailies of persons within the political party saying, he will not be imposed on the party. These are all speculations, but you're a member of the party and would like to hear. Um, share your thoughts on the president, good luck, former president, good luck, Jonathan situation. Is he going to be on the screen list? Is he a member of your party? What's the situation? All right, I will, I will rather say, let me affirm the position of the National Working Committee of the party and the presidency, and they're, they're very clear that former President Gulo Jonathan is not a member, he's not a card-carrying member of the All Progressives Congress. But the Biosa State, he has um, not submitted. APC had said that he has been a member of the, the party. Never did the Biosa APC say so. It was reported. It was a creation of social media. They never said so. Interesting. That's one. Two, he did not purchase the APC presidential nomination form, did not submit SIM, has not presented himself for screening. And so there is no way that those foundational things are not in place. You expect him to emerge as candidate of the APC. That will be the greatest, um, I don't want to call it, of the century. I don't want to call it 419 or uh, <laughs> that will be the seventh or ninth wonder of the, of the world or in, uh, in the world of politics. So <laughs> I don't expect that President Gulag Jonathan will emerge as candidate of the APC. The likelihood is remote. Now, let's go back to the member of the um, party that had spoken about... I'm not going to be wrong. He's a good man. He's a great man. But that is not in doubt. But th let's stick to party politics here. Um, let's go back to um, the reports that the party chairman um, is under fire and has not necessarily implemented, you know, the the agreement of the National Working Committee as to the party and it's hiding under President Buhari's um, name to um, run away from responsibilities in the words of that gentleman. Um, but then is there a disconnect between what the NWC is, is 
uh, NWC's position is as opposed to the plans uh, that are in the works for the primaries in itself? Uh, what, what I can say is that rumor, intrigue, misunderstanding is part of our political culture. Um, our political culture is still evolving. At this stage, what I can say, I'm not a member of the National Working Committee. I'm not a member of the National Executive Committee of the party. And so I am not seized of fact decisions made that has not been implemented. Hmm. Perhaps he who alleged should come and present more details to Nigerians and say, in the National Working Committee, we agreed on A, B, C, and this has not been implemented. For me, an ordinary member of the party, I can see that things are proceeding at pace. Things are going well. And so we expect that in the next few days, we will go for our party convention. One of the aspirants will be elected as candidate of the party, and will go ahead and defeat the PDP as we have always done, and of course continue uh, reign and do better for the country. I like your optimism. And I, uh, there's something... I'm an incredible optimist. <laughs> I must say something that I've noticed in today's conversation, being whether from the PDP's conversation to this conversation, the PDP obviously thinks the APC is the only opposition. The OP APC also thinks that the PDP is the only opposition. What about the other political parties? You seem to look at only the PDP. Uh, uh, all right. Why uh, is that? I don't, I don't think that is. Is it true. that you do not consider the other candidates in the other political parties? My, my letters column. Formidable enough. My letters column dealt with what I call the prospects of the third force. Um, the reality today, the reality is not what we would have desired, is not imagination, is not theoretical. The reality of today is that only two political parties have the national spread, the organizational structure, perhaps the resources to a Probably a According to what statistics? Where, what, what, when, where, where did you get this? Uh, have you done a recent survey of sorts to make you certain that the Labour Party does not have the spread of the PDP? Neither does, neither does um, any other party. I, I can give you additional SDP indicators. I can give you additional SDP. indicators as we speak. Now, in the National Assembly, you have two dominant parties. The APC and the PDP. The other party with some presence at the National Assembly is what they call the Young uh, Progressive Party and um, one other party. So not having someone in the National uh, Assembly, does that also come down no, to you, the you structure of the party? You can take it to the state assemblies too. The various houses of assembly at the state level. Only five parties have presence. What does that tell you? But the SCP used to be a big party in this country. So are you saying that those, those structures have crumbled? I mean, does, do they cease to exist no, you, because they're not, no longer the party at, that is leading? You know, look at electoral seats won by these parties. Mm -hmm. They are two dominant parties. Whether as governors, in any case, for the governors, there are only three parties. PDP, APC, and Abga with one state. How as you measure the strength of a party? What we have measured the extent of a party is by the electoral victories. Hmm. There are many other ways, different models to measure the strength of a party. The number of legislative seats, the number of government houses they occupy, their membership strength, their presence in every local government. So visibly, the PDP and the APC are dominant. And it's like that in most mature democracies. Now, if you look at the UK, you have the Conservative Party and the Labour Party are these two dominant parties. That does not mean that there are no other parties. In the United States, of course, you have the Democrats and the Republicans. There are other parties. In Kenya, you have two major parties. There are other smaller parties. In South Africa, you have two dominant parties. The, the ANC and the Democratic Alternative. It doesn't mean you don't have other parties. And so these parties are called parties on the fringes or the fringe parties. Mm. They have them in Nigeria, too. Mm. You have what it takes to win the presidency, I doubt. Well, that might be a, a tough call, but then all those things remain to be seen. Finally, before I let you go, because time is not on our side. Um, is the party going to be considering the um, Southern call for the presidential ticket, or 
uh, they going to dump zoning and throw their ticket open as the People's Democratic Party? Well, to your date, the party has not taken a firm position on the issue of Why zoning. Why is that? Now, but I can tell you this. Now, in the leadership of the party, um, if you watch um, the, what is playing out, the tendency is that you will convince yourself that the party is pro-Southern candidate. And I don't see anything wrong with that. I support that. What has happened in the past, or till now, is that Nigerians have a misconception about the North. A monolithic North, or a North, a homogeneous North, you know, there's nothing like that. A monoreligious North, where everybody that is in the North is a Muslim. Um, um, the concept of one North, everybody in the North will vote for a, a common political party because that party present, is presenting a Northern candidate. A culturally united North. Not likely. Now, in the North, you have multiple ethnic groups. You know, you have at least two major religions there. You have a substantial number of Christians as well as you have Muslims. You have, you know, people of diverse cultures and diverse political persuasion. Now, even the literacy level differs from area to area. And so the North is not going to vote M block or as one block. Okay. So if our party presents a Southern, if APC presents a Southern candidate, he has equal chance like a Northern candidate. Well, all fingers are crossed. Uh, come June, we will be watching to see what happens at the Eagle Square. At the Eagle Square. Okay. Well, Dakuku Adol Pesicide is the former Director General, Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, the Massa. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. And thank you, too. Always a pleasure. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. Uh, we have come to the end of today's conversation. Always talking for development. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. with Plus Politics. I'm Mary Anacone. Have a great evening. <laughs>